Okay. Oh. And that was, so we took an hour almost to do. Uh, part one. So we can go to part two. Um, so like I said, we almost like almost over with time. We can extend the time and those who want to leave, they can leave. I will post their videos. I will separate them and make them smaller. So I, I will post four videos because then it will take us longer to do all of them. So that then makes it easier and quicker to. Um, I will post them. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe later today, after immediately, I will download them and then post them. Okay, so let's. Any questions so far? It, as you can see, that it took us longer together to do only part one. Remember, you have only an hour in the exam to answer part one. Then you have an hour to answer part two. So in the exam, you will not have me explaining concepts. You just have yourself and teaching the box. It will take you less time because you're not going to go through exactly the same thing that I am going through with you. Okay, so. Let's look at part one. Part one asks, uh, this is, now we move into sampling distribution questions. And with sampling, sampling distribution questions, they give you the mean, they give you the standard deviation, and they tell you what your sample size is, and what they are asking you is to the error. Remember? Unless you see the mean, the standard deviations and all that. So in your cheat sheet thing, yes. you would have written sampling distribution from for the mean. And with the mean, you will have your standard error formula and the probability formula, your standard sampling distribution formula, your Z score. So uh, your standard error, you will write, you would have written it like that, which tells you the standard error for the mean. And this is your population standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. So you just take your standard deviation, which is a thousand, divide by the sample size, which is a 10,000. Square root of 10,000. And you will have your, sample, your standard error. Where is she? It's in the seconds. And what do you get? The answer? Ten. I got ten. The answer is which is option A. Remember, you're writing on Monday, so whatever I'm saying today, I hope you are following it. Write a cheat sheet with your chapters and the formulas that relate to that, so that in the exam you have things readily available for you. I know I'm going to get into trouble because your lectures also listen to this recording. I am giving you wrong uh, advice here, but in order for you to pass, you just need to make sure that you do this this way. You, this is a one-time offer because next year, if you fail and you start next year, next year there will be a proctor when you're writing the exam. Therefore, it means somebody will be looking at what you are doing. You will have to do a 360 view of your area to show that there is no piece of paper anywhere and you write your exam like that. So this is a one-time opportunity for you to pass it. And to do that, I am giving you that. So Thank you. You must, you must do that. Write a cheat sheet formula with all the formulas that you will need per chapter and highlighting which chapter it is. It makes life easier. I've already yes. done that. Yes. And, and the table as well. 
So the table, you just open it. You have it ready open on the side. So remember, it will not be on your my unit. So you will have your my my what do you call that? My exam open. Exam. So you cannot download the exam paper as well. So you will have your your my exam open, but you can always go back. So because it will be in Google, and you can always talk toggle between your Explorer and your PDF document in that way. Okay, so going forward, the next question also continues. Uh, so in this exam, they gave you only one question from uh, from sampling distribution. So this will be a question from confidence interval. And all these are hints. Like you just need to make sure that you know what you're looking at. So they mm. say it's confidence interval, we know that. The other thing that you also need to make when you do this, for confidence interval, you remember the table I shared with you to say uh, critical values. And we have the Z alpha divided by two values and all that. You can write your critical values um, uh, table. So you will go and create your critical value and say this is more for my Z alpha divided by two, and this will be for my Z alpha. Uh, and then here you will say at 95% confidence interval, what will be my critical value? 1,96. At my 90, it will be 1,645. Because for 95 confidence interval, it will be different for Z alpha, and this will be uh, 1,645, something like that. So, but you will need to mm -hmm. make, use the, of the correct confidence intervals right there. Okay, so I'm going to give you a shortcut because always remember for a 95% confidence interval, your Z critical value, alpha divided by two will always be 1,96. We know that we're doing the mean, the confidence interval for the mean, because this is the population mean, therefore the formula is your point estimate plus or minus the critical value of Z alpha divided by two times the standard error, which is your population standard deviation divided by the square root of N. So now we know what our mean is, we know what our standard deviation is. That's the other thing. Sorry, I forgot to mention this. They give us the sample standard deviation for the mean. Oh, let's go back. Oh, this is going to be very interesting. For the mean, you need to read the question correctly and carefully. So I've given you wrong information right now, right here with this. So for population standard deviation, which is sigma, is known, then we use Z. If the population standard deviation, which is sigma, is unknown, So this is no, and this is unknown. If it's unknown, we use T. So when it's unknown, it means they give us the sample standard deviation. Sorry, my bad. So since this is a sample standard deviation, we're going to be using T alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom. We need to remember all those things. We need to remember that. So at 95, so we know that this will be one minus alpha is equals to 0 0.95, which means therefore our alpha is 0 0.05. So our degrees of freedom, which is n minus one, is reliant on that. So it will be 70 minus one. That is our degrees of freedom, which will be 69. Mm. So our T alpha, alpha divided by two, 
So if we divide alpha divided by two, we get zero comma zero two five. And our degrees of freedom of sixty seven. So you need to go 69. to the table. The group of freedom is sixty nine. Sixty nine. Oh, sorry, because yeah, it looks like sixty seven. Sixty nine. Yes. So we go to the T table. We we'll go T table. And this is the critical values of T, and we look for the degrees of freedom. And our alpha, uh, sorry, our T alpha of 0, 0,025, which is that. Problem number 1, 2, 3, 4, because when I scroll up, it's going to disappear. Column number 4. So we go down, 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 down. So continue to critical values of T. And we're looking for 69. And there is our 69. And our T value is that. One, two, three. One, two, three. And your critical value will be that. So please pay attention. What your your critical value will have been given in the exam because it, they might give you 60, 50, 40 different critical uh, different N values, or they might give you different uh, questions. So pay attention to your one that you are doing, but here I'm just giving you uh, hints on how to answer the question. So 1, 9949. Like there. So our critical value here is 1, 9994. 9949. 9949. That is our critical value. So now we can calculate our confidence interval. Point estimate plus or minus T alpha divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom and our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of N. Our sample size. 3730 plus or minus our critical value. We calculated it, it was 1,9949 times our standard error. Sample standard deviation is a thousand divided by the square root of 70. I'm also going to calculate it from my side. Please calculate it on your side so that we can compare our answers. 1,000 divided by the square root of 70 equals 119 point some number, multiply by 1,9949 equals, and I'm going to write here, plus or minus 238,4362. Because my calculator is in four decimal places, I'm going to keep it at four decimal places. 3730. Now, here I can just split it 3730 minus 238.4362 and 3730 minus 238.4362. Is three three four nine one comma five six. Uh, and I think because they uh, they rounded off to a whole number, so we can also round it off. Uh, three nine, it will be the same as three nine two. So because the other thing, we look at the, what the options looks like. So the options are whole number, so we can also keep our answer as a whole number. And the next answer will be. Uh. Three nine six eight comma four three six two. So which is option number three nine six eight. 
And that's how you will answer that question. Ma'am, can I ask something? Yes. Uh, the zero point, uh, the zero point on top of the the zero point nine five. Where do we get these values and zero zero point zero zero five? Okay, so a ninety five percent confidence level is equivalent to one minus zero comma nine five, which is ninety five divided by five. Remember that. 95 yes. divided by 100 is 0, 0,95. So a 0, 0,95, we can write it as 1 minus alpha. And if you make alpha the subject of the formula, so 1 minus alpha will be equal to 0, 0,95. I move alpha the site and I move one 0, 0,95 the site, it will be minus 0, 0,95. And to solve this, 1 minus 0, 0,95 is 0, 0,05 alpha. And this gives me 0, 0,005, which is that. To get the critical value of 0, 0,25, we say alpha divided by 2, which is 0, 0,05 divided by 2, which gives us 0, 0,0250, which is the answer we got there. I applied shortcut because I assume that you know this from the tutorial. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. Okay, moving to the next one. It's also confidence intervals. So here, yeah. We also need to read the question carefully. The minute you don't see anything about standard deviation or the mean, you must know that this is confidence interval for the proportion. So here in the statement, if you read, they didn't give you anything about the mean. So this is proportions. We're still doing confidence interval because if you look at this, the statement still stays state that confidence interval and it says construct a 99% confidence interval a 99% confidence interval it means it's 1 minus alpha of 0, 0.999 therefore it means our alpha is 0, 0.01 and since this is proportion and for proportion we always use z so we use P plus or minus our point estimate, which is the sample proportions. The critical value will be Z alpha divided by two. And our standard error will be the square root of your P one minus your sample proportion divided by N. Now, remember also, if they didn't give you your sample proportion, they would have given you your n divided by n. The study shows, which is our n, then commercial land laws shows that 80 of them have reduced their rent out. So our n, which is 80, divided by our n of 200 gives us our sample proportion. So what is 80 divided by 200? It's 0 0.40, 0 0.40, plus it's or over. minus our critical value. You need to go find it on the T-table. So it will be Z of 0, 0, 0.01 divided by 2, which is Z of 0, 0. For those who don't know where to find it, so 0 0.01 divided by 2, 
0,005. How we find it on the table? So there are two ways. If you have created yourself that vertical value table, if you create it for yourself, then you don't have to worry too much about where to find the Z how to find the Z vertical value. But I'm going to show you on the so this is the table that you can create for yourself. So I'm not sure if you are able to see this. I'm going to leave it here for some time. So take it up. This will help you. Regardless of the Z alpha divided by two or Z, so we can use Z alpha divided by two or Z alpha. It, as long as you can see the it's got the zero comma zero zero five number value. So we're looking for a 99% and we know that a 99% is 0 0.005. So therefore that will be the probability. But this we always say it is different. 2.58. Keep it at two decimals, 2.58. The only exception is that one. So this is 2.58. So you must have it as that. Okay. Did you write this table down? Did you copy? Take a picture. I'm gonna go out of it, but I'm going to show you how to find the same value on your table. Can I move? Hmm. No. Go back to the normal distribution table. You go there. You always use the Z, uh, the negative side of the table. Inside the table, we are looking for a value. We are looking for 0, 0,0005. So we will look for 0, 0,05. Uh, so this is 0, 0,059. So sorry, my bad. So we're looking for 0, 0,005. And this can be our answer. And if we go out, it corresponds to Z of minus 2.5 at the top, uh, sorry, on the left, and 0.58 and on the right. So, and that's how you will find the critical value. So we know that our critical value is 2.58 for this, for a 0, 0, 0, 0.005. It's 2.58 hours. Standard error, no, oh, sorry, uh, standard error will be for the um, Forty times one minus forty divide by our n of two hundred. So if you calculate whatever is inside, uh, one minus 40 is zero, gosh, sorry, not one minus 40, this would be 0 0.40. I wrote mm. it all wrong. 
So this should be 0 0.4 zeros. I hope you write it, you wrote it right on your side. One minus. Yes. Let's give it some time, it will pop up. <coughs> One minus 0 0.40. I hope you wrote it right. Yes, I did. Yes, so if you do that and Zero point four zero multiplied by zero point six zero divided by two hundred. The square root multiply by two point five eight. The answer you will get on this side will be zero comma zero eight nine four. And we can split it zero comma four zero minus zero comma zero eight nine four. And zero comma four zero plus zero comma zero eight nine four. And if we look at the answer here, it's in two decimals. So you will just keep your answers to two decimals. The first one, 0 0.40 minus 0 0.0894 will give you 0, 0,31. 3, 1. And on this side, 0 0.40 plus 0, 0,089 will give you 0 0.4, we round off 9. Which then it means option C is the correct one. Remember those who want to leave, you are more than welcome to leave. I will post the video and you can go through it at your own time. Okay. Next question. And now we move into hypothesis testing. This is unit nine. Remember with hypothesis testing, the six steps. So in the, when we get to chapter nine, you can do the cheat sheet for hypothesis testing for the mean, when the population standard deviation is known, when the population standard deviation is known, and for the proportion, and write all the six steps. Under each six steps, you write the important things that you need to remember under there. How you find the critical value, how you calculate your z value, how you make use of the decision, using a critical value or using the p value. Remember, mm -hmm. when the population standard deviation is known, you can use the z, the critical value and the and the z value to make a decision, or you can use the p value and uh, your p value and the alpha to make a decision. So you need to make uh, sure that you understand those. So if we look at this question, also you need to know how to make decisions based on whether you're doing a one-tail test, a two-tail test, and when it's a one-tail test, whether is it a less than or a more than, because also it's very important 
especially when you are doing the uh, pre-value decision. Based on that, we can look at the hypothesis. It says more than. And since they highlight that more than, then it also tells you what kind of a test are you doing. Like in the exam, you might get more than, you might get less than, or you might get equal, which is a two-sided test. So with the more than, then you know that this is a one-sided test. It will help when we look for the critical value because we know that we we'll just use an alpha value and not divide by two. So all these things are very important to remember as well. So in, if this is your null hypothesis, that says it is more than, what will be your alternative? How you will state your alternative? This is theory. Remember, your null hypothesis always contains an equal sign. And if this is what the researcher wants to prove, and does not have an equal sign, where does it go? It will go into your alternative hypothesis. So then it means in your alternative hypothesis, we will have all the statements that do not have an equal sign. So here they're asking you, what will be your alternative hypothesis testing statement? So since this is a one-sided test, and since it is a one-sided test, therefore it means that statement will go into a alternative hypothesis. So then the same statement you see there should state the same thing in your alternative. And we're looking for the incorrect answer. So that will be correct. The next step, they're asking you what will be the critical value. Based on the information you are given, which is step number two of the null hypothesis, based on the information you are given, look no. for those keywords. Is my population standard deviation known? If my population standard deviation is known, therefore it means I must go find Z critical value. And if I'm going to find a Z critical value, this says I must. My alpha is 0, 0,05, so therefore it means I must find my Z alpha. And therefore, if I find my Z alpha, because it's a one-sided test, remember that. Don't get confused. It's a one-sided yeah. test. We're going to find only Z alpha, not Z alpha divided by 2. We only find Z alpha divided by 2 if it's a two-sided test. Okay. So it means we're going to find Z of 0, 0,05. Zero five. Zero. And remember, I told you to go to use that table that I gave you. We're going to go to that table. If you look here on this, it says, regardless of what you see here at the top, it gives you your Z of 0, 0,05. Therefore, that will be the answer. If you didn't write this table down when I asked you to, you can go and find your Z alpha of 0, 0,05, which you come here and look for 0, 0,05. So you will come here and say 0, 0,05 is between those two values. And remember that it's minus 1,4 and those two values at the top will say 4, 5. 0, 0,16 and 4, 5, which is the same thing as what we found there. So then that will be correct. Then comes the test statistic. Since we're using a Z, so therefore, our Z test statistic will be the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of N. And you just substitute the values. In the sample is 1,200 minus your population mean. It's always in the statement. So in your null hypothesis, they will give you, this will be your population mean. So it will be a thousand divide mm -hmm. by the standard error mm -hmm. which is 800 divide by the square root of n our n is 100.
2.5. And the answer here will be 2.50. And here it says it is negative 2.5, therefore it means this is the incorrect one. Other than that, all this are what we just described. So Can we I recall what you mean? Test, and we know that alpha or level of significance is our alpha, which is minus, uh, which is okay. Question? Uh, can you show me how to do this calculation? Um, For the test and What state? calculator are you using? Are you using Casio or Sharp? Casio. Uh, if you are using a Casio, is it the Casio with the fraction thingy? Mm, yeah, 8 to FX, no. 8 to MS. Do you, do you have this kind of a function on your calculator? Do you have a fraction oh. sign on your calculator? So that looks like this. There is a, it should be a blocky thingy. Uh, I, uh, I don't see. No? You don't see it, so you, it means you don't have that. Okay, so what you will do, I'm going to give you, so you need to remember all these things. So you can say on your calculator, my pen does not want to write anymore. Let me okay. charge it. What you can do on your calculator is say the following. So you can do it step by step, or you can do it on your calculator straight forward. Step by step okay. will be will mean that you say what is the 800 divided by the square root of 100 and get the answer for that. Then you go to the top. Otherwise, you can use brackets. So I will say right now on your calculator, say 1,200 minus uh, 1,000 and press equal sign. You you need to yeah. let me know when you have done it. And then say, press the division sign, say divide by, then open the bracket, press the open bracket sign, and then say 800, and say divide by, and go find the function that looks like a square root. Do you, um, is it a button? So if it's just yeah, it's written a on the button, button, then press that, and then press 100 and then close the bracket. Okay. And then press equal. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, that one of starting with the below ones is much better than this other one. Yes, so you can do it this way. Or you can yes. say 800 divided by the square root of 100 and get the answer, and then get the answer for the top and then divide each other. So it depends yeah. on how you want to use your calculator, but you just need to yeah. know how to use your calculator. Okay. Yeah, this one. It's better. Right. Okay. So we'll go to the next question. It's also hypothesis testing. And yeah, it asks. Two-sided hypothesis testing, so they give you all the other information that you have. This is the pen is writing now. Okay. Two-sided hypothesis testing for the mean with an unknown, uh, sorry, no. with a known population standard deviation. So therefore, it means they give a population standard deviation. So here is the other thing you need to also remember. Since they said a two-tail test, and I can see that they're looking for the p-value, and they say the p-value yields a value of 0 0.03. It means this side and that side of this gives 0 0.03. Means divide by 2, this will be 0 0.03. So it means this side of the table and this side of the table, the value here was 0, 
0.015 and this side the will be 0, 0.015. That's what they are saying in terms of this information, if I look at it, because it says a two-sided hypothesis has the p-value of this because we know that for a two-sided, it will be two times the p-value that we find on the table. That will give us the actual p-value mm -hmm. for a two-sided test. So, the other thing you need to know, because this is more theory, need to know if it's a population standard deviation, we're using a AZ test just because of that. And since we're using a p-value, the two questions here, it talks about the rejection. Remember, the decision, when we use the p-value, we say if the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So it means you will need to go and, and find out if you're going to be rejecting the null hypothesis based on those p-values, uh, based on those alpha values. The other thing, which is the last question, it says the test statistics is this. Therefore, it means they say, if this is my z value, is no, no, if this is my probability of 0, 0.015, this is my probability. It says the probability that z lies between because this lies between the two values anyway. Because we're using the z, the z values, and go find the probability. So we're going to say the z of less than the value we need to find on the table is equal to 0, 0,015, which is what it says. It says if we need to go find that value on the table, we would have used this z test statistic. So we need to go and find whether this 1,88 gives us that value. And since this is positive, then it means we would have said one minus the value that we find on the table. So at the moment, I'm going to do the two state, the three statements, and we'll just go and check if one of those is correct. So let's start with the first one. We'll come back to the last one last. If the three statements um, holds or one of them is incorrect, then we don't have to do the last one. But I'm just going to show you. So the first one, we know that the population standard deviation is given, so it's correct. The second one, which is B, it says the null hypothesis is rejected at that. So we know what our p-value is. Our p-value is 0, 0,03. Mm. Mm. That's what we know from the statement that we are given. From that statement, we know that our p value is 0, 0,03. What is our alpha? Our alpha is 0, 0,05. Yeah. So here it says we reject the null hypothesis. So are we rejecting the null hypothesis? Yes, we are going to reject because the p value is less than alpha. Therefore, this is correct. So that will be correct. Yeah. And the next one, it says we're not going to reject the null hypothesis at 0, 0,01. So it means our alpha of 0, 0,01, is it less than? No, it is greater than. 
and when it's greater than, we do not need to become hypothesis. So this is correct. Correct. We are left with D. So with D, we know that D will be the one that is not correct. So, but how do I make sure that, uh, for example, if they were asking me to find and they um, they are asking you to find the correct answer, and the correct answer is D, you would have found that that it will be the one that is incorrect. But how do we find that? So what you can do is go find this T values, the test statistic values. It is 1,89. 1, 1,89. That's what they gave us. So you go to the table. And you will find it on the positive side. Remember, for a two, for a positive side um, value, so we use the positive side of the table because that is the the test statistic is your z value. Remember that now. Your test statistic mm -hmm. is your z value. So since it will be in the positive side, we are going to say one minus the value we find on the positive side of the table. We are going to subtract that. So it's 1.89. So we go 1.8 and 9 at the end. Right. Take it to the end. So I will have to say 1 minus 0 0.9706. This answer should give me 0, comma, so this answer should give me 0, comma, 0, 0.015. Is it 0, 0,15? What did we say? 0, yes, it should give me 0, 0,15. So, let's see. What does it give me? 1 minus 0. 0.9706 equals 0. 0.029. So even though it is close to 3, 0 0.3, you need to be very careful because this said it is a two-sided test. When it's a two-sided test, we know that the value we find on the table, we need to multiply it by 2 or we need to add it to each other. It means if this was a p-value, then it means 0. Point, what did we say? 0 0.239. 0 0.0294. 0 0.0294. We will have to multiply it by 2. And it would have given us. Would have given us 0, 0,0. 0, 0,059. Which is not the same as 0, 0,0. Zero so you just need to know all the basic concepts on how to find the p-values and how to um, calculate the p-value. That's it. This is only because it was a two-sided test. If the question was a one-sided test, then the answer would have been correct for a p-value of 0, 0,03. Because for a one-sided test, the value you find on the table will be the value you find on the table, will be your p-value. But also remember that if your z value is positive, you will always need to minus, you need to minus that value you find on the table from 1. Okay, so moving on to the next question. Sir, Ms. B, can I ask something? Yes. Can I ask? Okay. On the uh, two sided, I only divide the p value by two if it's two sided. No, when you don't divide. Two -sided? No, 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 don't get confused. When you go find the p value on the table, you will use your z test statistic value. So this is your z value, and it will say it is 1,8. That because we need to use two, two values. So you will use this to go find the value on the table, but because it's positive, you're going to say one minus the value you find on the table. If it was negative, 
it would have been the value you find on the table. So only for positive, you do this. For a negative, you do that. And also for a negative, only if it's big, I think, as well. So for sorry, for positive, only if it goes in the positive side of the table, the bigger side of the table, you will need to do that. <clears throat> so um, the other thing, when you go find the p-value, depending on if it's a two-sided text, remember that you're going to say p-value plus p-value. This is only for the two-sided test, or you're going to say two times the p-value. That is for the two-sided test. For a one-sided test, the value you find on the table, it will be your p-value. And that's it. No division, no multiplication, no that. I divided this by two so that I can show you the two sides. You don't have to do that. It was just me trying to explain how did they get 0 0.03 because it's a two-sided test. Since it's a two-sided test, we know that there are two sides and each side has 0 0.15, 0 0.15. We add them together. The 0 0.15, 0 0.015 plus 0 0.015. If you add them together, they give you 0 0.03. That's only what I was trying to demonstrate. And this was just to help us. Yes, and this was just to help us answer the last question, which is question number D. Because if we didn't know that it would be 0, 0,015, we would have assumed that this answer is correct. Right? Because you wouldn't know that it should be 0, 0,015. Because you would have said, oh, but the answer I find on the table is 0, 0,094. Therefore, the p-value is 0, 0,03. Because you would have rounded it off and it would give you the same answer. Which is not correct. So two-sided. This 0, 0,03 is made up of the two sides, which each side, they are equal. Okay. Moving forward. Okay. I don't find the uh, p value on the on the table. The p value on the table, we find it by using the z value because this is the test statistic is your z value. So you will use your Z value. You will go to the table. The P value is this. These are all your P values. All these values inside the table, we call them probabilities, which are the probability values, P values, probability values. So you go find 1,8 and 9 at the top, and this will be your P value. And because it's in the positive side of the table, we need to say 1 minus the value we find on the table. And that's how you find the critical. If it's on the negative side of the table, if your your p value you're going to find it here, and your answer is negative, let's say it was 1,8, so it would be 1,89, and you will see that it would be that value. Only if it's a negative, you come and find the values here. And this is mainly because of the structure of the uh, tables because if you look at this it gives the smaller version of the less than table and if you look at the positive side of the table it takes also part of the positive side of the table as you can see that the shading is bigger so we're only interested in in that part and in order for us to get only this part which is the inverse of this we just want that smaller portion we're not looking for the entire proportion of the area of this table. Okay, so moving forward, which I think will be in um, we're almost there. I think this will be six. We are halfway down, halfway down the line. And now we are in chi-square, chi-square table. How do I know that we are in the chi-square table? It's because they give me, again, a confident, uh, um, 
a contingency table, and they also And then they gave you the table. And remember also, I don't know what kind of an assessment you wrote, which which tables or what questions did they ask you in terms of your your assessment. So you might be getting different assessment in terms of this. So for this one, they're asking for the number of degrees of freedom. Remember the degrees of freedom is the number of rows minus one and the number of columns minus one. So you count how many rows you have. You have one, two rows minus one. And how many columns you have? You have two columns. It's two. Two minus one. And this should be yeah. easy. Because it's one times one, which is equals to one. Is number D, C, D. Option D. Okay, and this question, they're asking you to find the critical value. So remember, we found our degrees of freedom and we know that our degrees of freedom is one and our yeah. alpha in this instance they gave us it's alpha level of significance of one so we go find the critical values of 0, 0,01 remember this is divide by 100 which will be 0, 0,01 and the degrees of freedom of one so you go to the critical values of t table sorry the critical values of chi table table and the critical values of chi. This is the table we're looking for. And you come here and you say, we ignore the ones at the top. You say you're looking for alpha of 0, 0,01 and you look here 0, 0,01, which is the last question. And we look for the degrees of freedom of one, which is the first row. Zero comma, uh, is it zero? Six comma six, three five. Three five. Okay. And we go back. And the answer here is option B. The next one also is still chi square question. And what they did, they give you the hints here. Yeah? So, what they also trying to do in the exam is to also save you time to do a whole lot of other things. So, on this question, they calculated your expected frequencies for you, they are inside the bracket. Remember your expected frequencies, we would have calculated them by saying the row total multiplied by column total divided by n. So we would have taken for 29.68, we would have said 56 times 53 divided by 100. It would have given us 29.68. So they already calculated that for you. You don't have to do, go ahead and calculate them again. So what they want you to do is to go calculate your chi-square test, which is 
your sum of your observed minus your expected. I'm writing it all wrong. Observed minus expected. Squared divide by the expected. I don't even have to write the bracket there. So it's your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. So you will need to go and calculate it. So our observed is 38 minus 29.68 squared divided by 29.68. It's going to take us forever. 18 times 26. Oh, why am I saying 18 times? 18 minus. 18 minus 26.32 squared divided by 26.32. So I will assume that you are also calculating. And this will be 15 times. So. Fifteen minus twenty-three point three two squared divided by twenty-three point three two plus twenty-nine minus twenty point six eight squared divided by twenty point six eight. So we can use the video. I must just double check my answers. I'm not going to say anything. I'm giving you time to also uh, do your, your calculations and then we can confirm the answers together. I'm just gonna write them so that you see them on, on the screen. And we can correct them if I am wrong. Are we happy? Yes. Do you agree with the values I have in front of you? Yes. 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 And since I I didn't right. Okay, since I didn't calculate the final answer, please calculate it and let me know which one. Tell me to calculate, please. Thank <laughs> you. 
It is E11.28. Yeah, 11.28. 11.28. Okay. And that will be the answer. Okay. We are almost done. And this is the last section of this last study unit, which is your study unit 11, which is the regression line. So, so go any further. Uh, this is the regression line, and this is the slope. Uh, sorry, this is the, the slope equation. So we need to go find the formula that calculates the slope. So they give us the sum sums. So we did this exercises actually as well in class. Remember that. We, <clears throat> we looked at... How do we calculate the slope? So what will be the formula? So you, uh, probably you have written that formula down somewhere um, where you can always come back and reference it. Uh, remember the formula for the slope is V1 is the sum the sum of xy minus the sum of x times the sum of y divide by n, everything divide by the sum squared of x minus the sum of x squared divided by n. Sum x squared minus sum of x squared divided by n. So our sum 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 xy is eleven thousand five hundred two minus your sum x is four six five times your sum y is six one three divide by our n is our sample size is eighty divide everything by our sum x squared. It's nine four five five minus our sum of x four six five squared divided by our n of h. Going to write it here. So I'm going to do step by step. So this will be one one five and two minus. This is a monster calculation. Four six four six five times six one three equals divide by thirty. I get nine five zero nine five zero one five divide by Nine four five five minus, and I do the same four six five squared equals divide by thirty equals seven two zero seven at the top one one five oh two. Minus 
find 501.5 equals, and that gives me 2000. Point five divide by nine four five five minus seven two zero seven point five and that gives me two two four seven two two four seven point five and divide by other. What do you get as an answer? I have done a lot. Not comma eight nine. And that gives you not comma eight nine, which is option number E. So like I said, you will need to write all these formulas down. So you need to make sure that you have that cheat sheet written somewhere for all these formulas. We dedicated two sessions, one Saturday looking at linear regression as well, and we looked at the different types of questions. As you can see that this question looks almost exactly like the ones that you got from those assessment A, B, and C. So you need to make sure that you go through all those so that you understand how to answer some of these questions as well. And I think this will be our last question. Second last question or last question, I'm not sure. Let's see if we go right to the bottom of this question. Yeah, this will be our last question. It is also the last the regression line. So how do we then answer this question? Uh, is there anything at the top? Okay, nothing. Suppose you have this relationship where they give you the regression line and they give you R squared. They don't want you to calculate almost anything other than theory that you need to know. You need to know how to interpret R squared. You need to know how to calculate, or you will have to calculate coefficient of correlation, which is R. And if you have R squared, remember you can take the square root. It will give you R. So the square root of R squared will just give you your R will be equal to R and it will answer question number D. The other thing is how you interpret the, the slope, the, the intercept. This is the slope. Remember with the slope, every one unit increase will decrease or increase. The intercept is the average estimate if X is equals to zero. You need to uh, interpret uh, your R squared, which says uh, what percentage of total variation in your x in your y variable is explained by your x variable and you need to be able to interpret your r because with r remember you can get the value of r as um, your r as negatively correlated positively correlated and also the strength of it. Is it a perfect? Is it a strong? Is it a weak relationship? If it's between minus zero, uh, if it's between 0 0.3 and zero, is it a weak relationship? If it's between 0 0.3 and 0 0.6, is a moderate relationship? And if it is between 0 0.6 and one, it is a strong relationship. And if it is one or minus one, it will be a perfect relationship. And zero will mean uh, no relationship. So you need to know all those things. So, based on the information given above, which one of the following statement is being correct? That's what we are looking for. Number A, there is no food traffic in the store. That is the food traffic is zero and the store sells online. The sales are estimated at 6,640. So it means if, because this is the excess food traffic, if X is zero, will the store sell uh, average 
sell at 6,640 6, because our sales are in thousands. So we substitute y is equals to 6.64 and we substitute by zero and therefore y is equals to 6.64. Or six, and we multiply this by a thousand, and we will find six thousand six hundred and forty. And is this correct? Yes, this will be correct. That's how you will answer the question. But we're looking for the incorrect one. The coefficient of correlation is that. So what you do is say the square root. Of 0, 0,6099. Calculate, let me know what you get. What is R? Did you calculate it? Yes. R is? 0 0.7809. Which, if you round it off, it will be 0 0.7810. Which means this will be the correct one. Because you get 0, 0.78096, some number and some other additional number. And if we round it off to three decimal to four decimals, uh, that will be us 0, 8, uh, 7810. So that is correct. So we move to the next one. Now, since we were given the R squared, yeah, since we're given the R squared, R squared will always be positive. Because if we calculate the R, we will never know what kind of a sign should be sign in front of the R, whether it's positive or negative, because we didn't calculate it. We were calculating it based on the R squared value, which is positive. To know what sign should R have, we need to also look at the sign of the slope. So this is very important. The sign in front of the slope tells us what would have been the sign in front of the R? So the slope is positive, so therefore it means our relationship is also positive. So I look at this. It says there is a positive relationship between the food and the sales of the store, and that's what, what we can look at the sign of the slope, which means that is correct. Now, number D is saying, so you need to know how to interpret the slope. You need to know how to interpret the coefficient of determination. Remember, the coefficient of determination is equals to 0, 0,6069. And the coefficient of determination, when we interpret it, we say, what? is the percentage of the variation in the y variable that can be explained in the variation of our x variable. That's how we interpret the coefficient of determination. So based on that information, if we look at our coefficient of determination, it's 0, 0,601. So we can say if we Multiply by 100, it will give us 0, um, 60 point, uh, 60 point, uh, or 61 percent. Let's say it will give us 61 percent, or it will give us 60.99 percent. And we can interpret it by saying 60.99 percent 60 of the total variation in the store sales is explained by the variation in the food traffic in the store. So if I look at the question G, it says 78, which does not say 60%. It, it, 
they using the value of our coefficient of determination, which would tell us that this is a positive or a, uh, because it's between 0 0.6 and 1, we call it a strong relationship, then it should have said this is a strong positive relationship between, or there is a strong positive relationship between the sales and the variation. And that is explaining the coefficient of determination, which is 0 0.67. So this should stay 60.99% of the total variation in the sale is explained by the variation in the, in the food traffic in the store. And with that, it concludes today's session, so which took us three hours. In the exam, you will need to finish this by within two hours. So to close off the session and to also remind you, remember the exam is two hours. You can start any time of the day between 11 and 3 o'clock. Make sure that when we take the exam, you make time for break. You go and breathe out. You will have section A and section B or section one and section two. Once you complete with section one, take a 10 minutes break or a 15, it doesn't matter how long you take that break. Make sure that you take a break and bring back your thought to say, I am prepared now to take the second session. Don't start the second session and, uh, and become so pressed to say, oh, but I'm panicking, I need to go to the bathroom and all that. Remember, once you start opening the session, the timer will kick off. You will need to accept the terms and, rec and T's and C's of the, of the exam as well before you start. You need to acknowledge so that they know that you, also, you, um, you are taking the exam. You need to play and then you can start your exam. Please don't start your exam if you see that you, you have network issues, you have this, don't start it. Wait a bit. Give yourself time. Remember, you can start even from 12, quarter past 12. The lecture also gave you all this information I'm relaying to you. It's part of that um, PDF document he distributed on my life email account. You can start your exam exactly at quarter past 12, or you can start at 11. But make sure that you have strong network connection. You, you, you are not going to be disturbed. Make sure that you put away your phone. Make sure that you have your tutorial letter 101 open with the tables on. Make sure that you have your cheat sheet formula um, uh, a uh, document in next to you so that you can use it for answering some of the questions. Um, and take your time. Don't hurry. Don't, don't panic. Relax. Take a breathe in between the questions and then continue pay, uh, pace yourself because you only have an hour once you open that session. You take a break. Please, after the first session, whether you start with session two or you start with session one, make sure that you take at least 30 minutes break or an hour break. It doesn't really matter so that you come back refreshed with a clear mindset that you're going to start looking at your exam and then open your exam and start again. The exam will be open up until three o'clock. So you still you have enough time. So you don't have to start immediately at 11. Like I'm going to stress this. You don't have to start immediately at 11 o'clock when everybody comes onto the system because then the system becomes slower. You can give your time, yourself time. You can say, I'm going to start at half past 11 or I'm going to start at quarter past three, quarter past 11 or quarter to 12. Or at least make sure that by quarter past 12, you, you started at least one of the exam. And this is only to give those who are having difficulties, challenges, and problems um, time to log in onto the system. Your exam starts at 11, but you have a leeway. So please don't panic. 
when you, you see that the system is slow. So if you log in at 11 and you see that the system is low, just say, oh, okay, I'll try in a little bit later. And then 15 minutes after that, you try again. And if it's still slow, try again after 15 minutes, but make sure that by quarter past 12, quarter past 12, you have started your exam. Once you have started with your session one, I'm repeating the same thing if, if you, you hear me right. Once you have started with your section one exam, the timer will start. You are given an hour to finish. You cannot go back to the next, to the questions that you didn't answer. You need to make sure that you answer all that. If <clears throat> you will see, you will get a button to say save answers and submit. You don't have to go ahead and click on save, 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 save all the time. The questions will always be saved. If the timer runs out and you are still working on your question, do not panic. The system will automatically uh, update your questions or your, submit your, your exam for you. Wherever you are on the part of the exam, the questions will automatically be up uploaded. Oh, sorry, your answers will up automatically be uploaded onto the system. You do not have to pay it. And that's all what I can do. I don't know what I can do for you. So remember also the other thing. On the day of your exam, I will leave the WhatsApp group open until half past 11. At half past 11, I'm going to switch it open for technical issues. Or, so it means I'm giving you a chance to assist one another or talk to me if you have any difficulties writing the exam between 11 and half past 11. On the WhatsApp group, please do not discuss answers. Please do not share with each If, for example, I forget to switch it off, Please do not discuss answers with one another because every question for every student might be different. You might get a different question to the other students that you are working with or you have in your WhatsApp group. So every student will get an individualized exam paper. But most of the questions will be exactly the same, but different questions. So sometimes the question might ask one student for incorrect answer, Sometimes one student might get the correct answer. Sometimes it might change the values. Instead of less than 0, 0,8, they might give you more than 0, 0,8. Instead of more than 0, 0,64, they might give you. So you will get different exam papers. Please, please, please stay away from the WhatsApp group or what you call the other social media thing, uh, the other uh, type of similar chat room that looks like what? Telegram. It will just distract you. Concentrate. You have everything. It's easy. You can get 100%. It's easy. We have done everything. We have gone through the assessment one that I gave you, the online assessment, chapter one, chapter six, and chapter one. You can see that similar questions are asked. We have done, gone through that assessment. We have gone through assessment uh, A and B of linear regression. You have assessment one till seven of the other thing and with answers as well, because I gave you the answers for that assessment. Make sure that you go through practice, 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 practice. It's easy to get 100% if not in the exam, because if you know everything, there is nothing wrong with you getting 100%. There's nothing that can stop you because we have practiced everything. Even what we did today is not something that is true. We have done it in class. We've worked through some of the examples we used in class look exactly the same as what we have done today. And through today. So you have everything you need to write this exam. Do not panic. Take a breather. Make yourself Rainbow's tea, don't make coffee, don't make, make sure that your mind, your brain, your soul is ready for the exam. Don't panic, 
don't look at what people are saying on the WhatsApp and oh, they're just going to make your life miserable. Just concentrate on your own face, your own exam, and everything will go right. Make sure that you write that, that cheat sheet formula sheet that I spoke about. Make hints, make like small things that you're still unsure about. Write it and say, remember to do one, two, three, four. Remember to one, two, three, when you answer questions like this. This is the formula. This is how we change the formula. All those things, make it easy for yourself. And pace yourself. With all that, I wish you all the best of luck with the exam. Uh, please don't leave the WhatsApp group. You can leave the WhatsApp group after you have received your exam mark and then so that we can chat about. So what I would like to do as well, after your exam, we can, I will open the, ex the, the, the WhatsApp group and then we can chat. We can reflect on how the exam was. You can talk about your experiences, how you enjoyed the, the exam and how you're looking forward to your uh, your results and so forth. And you can query anything, you can ask any questions there and you can talk. And then we can also use the WhatsApp group again after the exam results are out to just break about ourselves, how well we did or not how well we did or whether we wrote the exam or not and encourage one another. Don't worry. Other than that, from me to you, thank you for being part of the sessions. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for participating and always watching the videos. And uh, even though you didn't talk to me on my UNISA, so, but thank you very much for participating and downloading um, the material and also taking part in watching the videos that we both co-created. Um, and all the best. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your help. Thank you, Boy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.